Good afternoon, everyone. I am Cindra Kirscher, Program Coordinator for the Livestock Conservancy, and this is another edition of Wooly Wednesday. Thank you for joining us today or joining us after this live broadcast, and I hope you find some interesting uh, tidbits and opportunities in this chat. So joining me today is the co-author of not only the wonderful Fleece and Fiber source book, but the Field Guide to Fleece, which, as some of you may know, is a level one prize for our Shave Them to Save Them initiative. Welcome, Deborah Robson. Hi, Sandra. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today. It's wonderful to see you again. Yeah. And I love your sweater. Thank you. It is Clown Forest. Beautiful. And so, I was going to say, I finished it. Um, late October and I've been wearing it ever since and it's turning out to be very practical it's the right weight for most of our weather um, it is sufficiently durable that it's going to last for a long time and it makes me very happy nice well it makes me happy to see that yeah so speaking of sweaters we're actually here with a little announcement today we are promoing our first 2022 fiber challenge it doesn't actually start until January. It will be a four week alternating weeks throughout January and February. Shave, not shave our sheep, save our <laughs> sheep. <laughs> Wetter challenge. So we're in 2022, we're stepping it up a notch and moving on to bigger projects. And Deb is going to be leading this challenge for us. Of course, I'll be co-hosting and helping with technology and questions and all of that sort of thing. But Deb is going to be our expert educator for this challenge. So thank you for tackling this for us. I'm super excited for this challenge next year. Well, and I love yeah. making breed specific sweaters and rare breed specific sweaters more than any others. <laughs> Great. So tell everybody why we are promoing this challenge so early. Because a sweater requires a little forethought. And Yes, we understand that it's the holidays. I don't have any time to take on anything else right now either. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we can do in the back of our minds while we are preparing for our festivities, whether they are large or small, and they will be small at our house, but very pleasant, um, is to kind of have in the back of our minds what we might want to do after the dust settles and the new year starts. So... Mm -hmm. This is basically, um, let's just prime the pump and play with some ideas because sweaters take a little planning mm -hmm. and they take either a reasonable amount of seeking out yarn or of spinning yarn. Um, and that requires either getting into your stash for fiber or finding some. Mm -hmm. So basically it's not an instant project. Uh, mm -hmm. with mittens or socks or something else, small scarf. Um, you can order a scanty yarn, have it a week later, and just go. Mm -hmm. Sweaters, there are too many variables. And there's a fair amount of investment in either money or time or both. Mm -hmm. uh, so you want to you wanna think about it. And mm -hmm. that's that's our goal in starting up now, is to say, okay, ponder a little bit. Start yeah. poking around. So before you share with everybody what specifically they should be thinking about as they make these decisions as to whether or not to, to join the challenge, to challenge themselves, but what breed to select, what type of sweater pattern to use, let's give a little detail about the challenge. So the exciting thing about this challenge in 2022 is, as you know, all of our previous challenges have been run exclusively through a Facebook group. We are stepping up our game and we are zooming every challenge <laughs> from now on. <laughs> so all of the people who are not active on Facebook, maybe the Ravelry users, maybe they're not active in either group, you will have the ability to watch all of these videos to interact live with Deb via Zoom. And once you, once you enroll in the program or in the challenge, which is $20, by the way, it's $20 for the four weeks to make a sweater with Deb, we will send you a confirmation email. It's actually eight weeks. It's four. I was going to say it's four <laughs> sessions, but we stretch them out because we yeah. know that it's going to take some time. 
I heard you thinking. I was like, you okay. heard me thinking that. Yes. <laughs> so eight weeks total for the challenge Four cl four classes with Deb. Um, so we have created a private web page on our livestock conservancy, rarewool.org site. So it's not accessible. You can't go to the website right now and look for it. You will only be able to get there via the link that you receive in the confirmation email we send you after you enroll for the challenge. In that website or in that web page will be a Zoom link for each of the four classes with Deb. There will be link to Deb's documents. There will be um, her. Well, well, I won't. I won't let the cat out of the bag. I'll let you share what you're. <laughs> <laughs> once you've shared already, um, but also a link to the rules for the challenge. So you can review those there. And then after the Zoom, all of the Zooms will be recorded and we will post a link to that same website, that same web page so that you can go back and rewatch. Or if you weren't able to participate live, you can go back and watch it for the first time. So that's the exciting news. Uh, dates for this challenge, it's every Wednesday, we're keeping Wooly Wednesday on Wednesday, but instead of the evening, we are stepping it up a little earlier in the day to 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I know everybody can't join at any time of day, so um, we're going to keep it within the work day. So 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday, January 12th, Wednesday, January 22nd, Wednesday, February 9th. And the final week will be Wednesday, February 23rd. All right, Deb, what have you already shared that is going to be in that? Well, it's already there, actually. Um, what documents have you shared with me? Let, I want you to, to tell everybody what you've created for them for this challenge. Okay, well, the first document talks about how to begin thinking about a sweater. And one of the things, if you are thinking about a sweater challenge, you can make it big, you can make it small. In other words, if you are feeling cautious about this, make a sweater for a small person. So a baby sweater, a toddler sweater. Um, I have conveniently a great nephew who's a lot of fun to knit for. And I'm sure you can find somebody in your sphere who might appreciate and be able to handle a rare wool sweater who's little and it is possible to choose fibers from our rare breeds list that will survive machine washing and drying so if that's an issue don't worry about it so um, we can go into that uh, so type of sweater are you going to make a pullover are you going to make a uh, cardigan are you going to make a camisole not many of the breeds will go to camisole, but some of them will. Um, camisole is sort of my guide for, okay, is it good for really next to skin? Yeah. Um, the other thing to think about is the durability in terms of the recipient. So again, I was mentioning that there are machine washable and dryable, naturally machine washable and dryable yarns and fibers in our collection. Those also tend to be pretty durable. So they would be really good for somebody who's a little hard on their clothes. So that's something to think about. So matching the recipient and the breed and the style of sweater is something that you want to mull in your head. If you're somebody who's done sweaters before and are very comfortable with this whole realm, you may want to challenge yourself with a significantly larger and more complex project. Um, I'm probably hitting the middle ground myself just because um, I have a lot on my plate and I need to finish things in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so I am actually working on a sweater myself, which I will talk about as we go. It is Jacob. It is a pullover and it has a little bit of cabling on it to make it interesting. And I'm very much looking forward to it. I've swatched for it and I've actually started started the little bit of cast on at the top. It's a top down. So you can work top down, bottom up, whatever style you want. The biggest difficulty for me in looking at preparing resources for the challenge has been providing sweater samples because in the past I've I've 
run through patterns and figured out, okay, this would work. You know, this, these are good to recommend. They're free. They're readily available both on and off of Ravelry. And they're, you know, highly rated, reasonably easy to do, interesting. There is so much diversity in sweaters that I couldn't do that. However, I will be available for consultation on designs. So if somebody is thinking about a pattern and they let me know ahead of one of our sessions, I'll take a look and say what I think in terms of whether what their thoughts are. I mean, if, do you think this would work with X? Do you think I could handle this? I'll try to do that. So I will take a look at the patterns and, and see what I think. But there were just too many. The other thing in, I have a, it's not, this isn't the pretty version because I only have a black and white printer. But one of the documents that I prepared that will be available early um, involves a chart talking about the likely softness and likely durability of the breeds on the conservation priority list. So you can look at the chart and say, okay, if I want to go with something that can be next to skin, which are the breeds that will fulfill that? And they will be the ones that are over in this area. So some of them are, have quite a wide bar. So that means you have a wide range in that breed. And so you're going to need to look for a specific yarn or a specific fleece that meets the needs you're looking for. So we'll talk about that and where the breeds fall on that on that chart. So this is a different chart than I've put together for any of the other um, challenges that we've had in the past because my focus is different now. So my focus mm -hmm. is on sweaters. So what what how would each of these breeds work for a sweater? So I've put them into four, well, actually six groups. Um, the sixth being the, the so-called hair sheep, one of which is actually a, a self-shedding wool breed. Um, some of them will be easier to find in fleece. Some will be easier to find in roving. Some of them will be easier to find in yarn. Yarn is the most difficult because the rare breed folks have to come up with enough bulk to send the fiber to the mill. And yet I have found almost all of the breeds as yarn in several weights. So as you think about, okay, who do I want to knit it for? Is it me or somebody else? What size, what complexity, uh, what gauge do you want to work at? And that's a question of how fast you want to get your sweater done in part. Um, or say you want to do a lot of complexity, but you don't want to take eons. So you'll choose a larger gauge and a more complex pattern. So you kind of find your own niche in here. And one of the things I wanted to mention was um, the differences in the yarn feel and weight that you can get. Um, I have here in front of me probably 40 swatches of rare breed wools that I have done over the years. I have an ongoing project, which is my swatch collection. It is a project unto itself. I had planned to start it with a lot of hand spun yarn that I prepared when I was getting ready for the fleece and fiber source book. The yarn that I spun actually ended up being constructed into the swatches that are shown in the book. So I didn't have them at the end of the book um, and have been needing then to replace that yarn gradually. And because I wanted to get a running start on my swatch collection, I've been collecting uh, commercially spun rare breed yarns and working them up into swatches. But I do have some hand spuns. So for example, this Hog Island is hand spun. Um, it's really hard to find Hog Island um, as a commercially spun yarn. So if you are aiming for this one, look around, but don't be too surprised. Now, one of the cool things about Hog Island is its elasticity. Um, and just imagine that in a sweater. Um, there is a probability, although a not certain, not a certainty, that Hog Island may be one of our machine washable and dryables. Um, because we don't know a lot about its heritage, we know some things. Um, some of its background is in the breeds that do provide machine washable and dryable. 
But if I were thinking of that, I would do two swatches that were identical. And then I'd run one through the washing machine and the dryer and see what happened at the end before I committed to a project. But um, this elasticity is just um, enchanting, frankly. Um, let's see here. I also have Dorset Horn. Um, this is a, is this hand spun? Yep, it is. This is hand spun too, and it has a great deal of elasticity to it, not as much as that Hog Island did. Um, again, it's a breed that may pass our machine washable dryable test. Uh, some of the breeds that will definitely pass that test include the Oxfords. We have Oxford here, a couple of Oxford swatches. We have the Shropshire, highly likely to pass that test. This feels really good, this Shropshire yarn. And I actually have proof of it here in the South Down where one of these swatches was machine washed and dried. The other one was not. They were knitted to at the same time to the same number of stitches and then the same number of rows. So I basically knitted two swatches on the same set of needles, then ran one through and they are identical in size at the end of this. So um, if you want that function, you can get that out of the rare breed yarns. So um, Southdown is a clear winner in that regard. Um, the other thing is to think about, ah, I want to show you some Rommeldale's here. So Rommeldale is um, highly likely, either that or Santa Cruz, to be reliably okay next to skin for most people. Mm -hmm. And other breeds that can run into that realm include the Navajo Churro at mm -hmm. its finer end and the Shetland at its finer end. Um, the Jacob that I am working with actually probably would be okay next to skin. But uh, Rommeldale CVM is available as yarns um, and fleeces and roving and can come at a number of different weights. Um, this one is a bulky. Mm -hmm. So if you really want to um, work kind of fast and still have a soft yarn, the interesting thing about making a soft yarn at a bulky weight is what you want to do is spin finer plies and then ply up because then you'll get some durability in that yarn. Mm -hmm. um, here's another Rommeldale. Is that one? No, those, these are all commercially spun. Um, and here's a natural colored Rommeldale. So as you look for fibers, um, most of what you see will likely be natural colored. So you can choose a bright white or a cream or the browns or the grays. Um, here's some hand spun Navajo, uh, not, not Navajo, or what I'm saying, Jacob. And I separated by the colors. Um, you can spin just like confetti, just taking it as it comes, or you can separate the colors and then do color work. Um, this is a commercially spun Jacob. Um, nice bounce to this. This would be a really pleasant fiber. Um, it would be fine next to your skin. If you're in doubt about whether a yarn is going to be okay next to your skin in say the neck area or the wrists of a sweater, which are the places where it's gonna show up if there's a problem, do a swatch and then stick it inside your shirt or inside your cuff and see how long you can stand to have it there. And if you forget it's there, you're in good shape. If it starts to itch a little bit, then you want to think about, okay, do I want to take a different design of sweater? Do I want to use a different fiber at the cuffs and at the neck ribbing, which is, that's perfectly fair. Um, you can do that. Um, or how do I want to handle that? But the way to test for your sensitivity is to swatch and then put it someplace with sensitive skin where it's likely to touch and see if it works. Um, the... I wanted to show the American Tunis here.
because I have a lot of tunis. Um, and it comes in different weights and slightly different colors. And this is this is interesting. It's really textured, but it is commercially spun. So you can get a really smooth yarn. This one is incredibly smooth. So what I like to do is I like to see who's doing what with various breeds. And as I mentioned, color, here's a nice creamy one. Um, and here's a finer one. which I got by hand spinning it. <laughs> Check my notes. This is hand spun. So this is about a fingering weight, maybe a little bit heavier than that. So most of the American tunis I've seen um, has been in the heavier weights. This is another hand spun one. Um, and my hand spuns tend to be in general a little bouncier. Although the Jacob I'm working with right now is a commercially spun and it's incredibly bouncy. So I mentioned color. And you will find a variety of browns and grays and several shades of cream or white. You can also occasionally, and it's worth if you want this uh, hunting it out, find dyed fiber or dyed yarn. This was yarn. This is Clun Forest and it was hand dyed. So there are some people out there providing that, or you can, of course, if you have the lead time, uh, get a natural colored fiber and do your own dyeing if that's in your skill set, or if you want to play with it. Um, there are some relatively easy ways to dye yarns. I'm not going to get into that, but um, if you want to, uh, resources are out there. And if I'm asked way ahead of time, I might be able to come up with some. Um, so color is an option, but you will not find it um, right off the bat, probably. Um, it is worth seeking out and asking for because um, what we ask for, oddly enough, we can get because there are people out there who want to do it for us. <laughs> So what else is on this list? Okay, so I've got my groups of breeds and how you can start thinking about them. I have information on thinking about what kind of yarn and what kind of sweater match together. I have a recommended basic pattern resource, which I'm actually going to tell you about now, which is Ann Bud's The Knitter's Handy Book of Sweater Patterns. It has um, templates for a lot of basic sweater styles in all sorts of sizes and all sorts of gauges. And if you need a starting point, it's a brilliant one. So uh, you can look that up. Tin Can Knits, they have their own website and they're available through Ravelry. They have a lot of free, well-designed, well-written patterns for a variety of sizes of sweaters. So take a look at what they've got if you if you really need a starting point, those are very, very solid places to start. Um, I also have information on how much yarn do you need. There are a lot of calculators online. Their ranges are all over the map. So if you look at one and then you look at another one, you're just going to end up confused. So what I did was I looked at a lot of them and I summarized them so that it's like, OK, if you're knitting a small, small sweater, in a fine gauge, this is kind of what ballpark you'll be in. This is what you might need for a large size sweater. Here's what happens if you want cables or a shawl collar or another detail um, that will eat yarn. Brioche chews up yarn. It's great. It's a great pattern option and you will really use a lot of yarn. So um, kind of how to think about how much yarn you might need. Another thing that I'm good at that we'll probably get into in one of the middle sessions is uh, it looks like I'm going to run out of yarn. What do I do? Because that's happened to me a lot. Um, <laughs> at this point, I just buy a lot extra. <laughs> um, but I have figured out ways to design around that problem. Although the sooner you catch it, the better. So the more the sooner you catch it, the more options you have in terms of, of punting, 
um, or redesigning or finding more yarn that goes with it that may not be identical. Because one of the things that we run into when we are working with rare breed yarns is that the supplies of a given type will be finite. So somebody will do a run and when it's gone, it's gone. So it's good to order everything you think you'll need and some extra. But if you um, fall down and fail in that regard, um, it's not the end of the world. So that's a start. So you might want to think about what breeds you want and what, where you might get yarn. With The Livestock Conservancy has a site that is fantastic for searching for this kind of stuff because you can put in the breed you want, you can put in whether you want yarn or fleece or roving or whatever you want, and you can also put in, do you want us a shave them to save them provider? And you click a little box. And if you want it local, you can tell it don't go very far from my home and it won't. And you can see who's got, who's got the fiber there. A number of the providers you do have to contact by email. So it can take a little time. Another reason for us to start this ahead of time mm -hmm. um, is so that you can you can reach out and find out what's out there and see who's got the yarn that you want to play with and enough of it. So mm -hmm. that's where we are in our beginning. Ooh, that's a great overview. Thanks, Deb. Yeah. So one of the things that I want to run through before you decide whether or not you'd like to tackle this challenge is um, a little bit of the rules. The rules for this challenge are similar to the rules for all of the other challenges we have run. Of course, we require that you use 100% wool from one of the breeds in the Shave Em Save Em program. So those are, those are the 23 breeds in our conservation priority list. And of course, as, as Deb has expressed, some of those are gonna be better suited for sweaters than others. Um, and those breeds are available on our website on the conservation priority list at livestockconservancy.org. They are also listed in the files tab here in Facebook, in the Shave Them to Save Them Facebook group. Um, the nice thing about this project that is different than the actual Shave Them to Save Them passport projects that you may have been completing is we encourage you to get creative. So you can use a single breed for your sweater. You can use 10 breeds for your sweater or somewhere in between. <laughs> like Deb mentioned, if you know, if you start to run out, you can bring something else on board. If you are a little more sensitive around the neck or the cuffs, you can use a different breed there. You can ply your breeds. You can alternate your breeds in your sweater, like color blocking. You, you can get as creative as the resources that you, you have available and the, the creativity within your own self, your own imagination. So we strongly encourage you to play. That's what these challenges are all about. They're about playing with these breeds. We also have the fiber profiles now. We do. Yes. Thank you for that reminder. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for creating them. Yeah. <laughs> So if you haven't already seen the uh, the e-news blast that we sent out last month, Deb has done the legwork for us for creating these beautiful, 23 beautiful fiber profiles. So they give a little bit of history about each breed, but they give a lot of information about fiber quality, best uses, uh, staple length, micron count, handle, all of that good kind of stuff. And they have some photos on there, both of the sheep, what their fleece looks like, and what a lock looks like, and you might also have you have some swatches. A few on of them something. have swatches. Yeah, it depended yeah. on how much space I had. I only had one page for each breed, so it depended mm -hmm. on what what came up in the way of space. They are very pretty, very informative, and those are also available on both of website, the rarewool.org website for free download, and in the Shave and Save and Facebook group for free download. So help yourself to those. Those might also help you make some selections uh -huh. when you're thinking about sweaters. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, Deb, is just, you know, what we're going to do on the four weeks. I know it's, it's kind of uh, open so that you can provide a lot of support for folks. Yep. Um, swatch planning materials, I think, was one of the weeks that we probably the first week that we're uh -huh. going to get more in depth to this conversation that we're already having. Uh, week two, I think we're going to do swatches and measurements. 
Does that sound right? Yes, I'm actually going to start with swatches in the first week because I'm going to show okay. my swatches and talk about, I did three different swatches for this sweater. Um, and I will, any one of them would have been fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about why I chose the one I did and why I would have chosen one of the others um, with this one yarn that I'm, I'm playing with right now. So yeah, basically I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to talk through my process on this sweater in part, but I also want to encourage people to get us questions several days in advance so that mm -hmm. I can actually um, do some digging if I need to, to help answer questions. Mm -hmm. I see my role throughout this process as both kicking it off and then providing handholding as needed and or encouragement. Um, so if people are having questions about, okay, I'm not sure about this, would this pattern, how's this pattern looking to you? The other thing I'll talk about a little bit, one of the things that's happening with me is I am not working at exactly the same gauge as the pattern calls for, because the gauge I chose was a little different, but I didn't want to change patterns. And if you're reasonably close, but not exactly there are ways you can approach the pattern so that you can still use it. So anyway, we'll talk about that a bit. Um, because these yarns are often either hand spun or mill spun short run, they may or may not exactly match standard gauges. So we will talk about that too. So basically I see myself as in the first couple of weeks providing more information and in the last couple of weeks of our, our, our getting together, um, a lot of problem solving, okay, where, where, where am I lost? How do I get unlost? Um, that sort of thing. So it is pretty free form and I see myself as a support person. Coaching. Yeah, yeah exactly. Coaching. Yeah. yeah. So as Deb said, we, we are going to, because Deb is not providing these patterns for you herself, she might not be familiar with the pattern that you choose. So in order for her to familiarize herself with that pattern or with your question as it relates to the, the fiber that you're using and the pattern that you're using, and because she is a very busy woman, <laughs> we want to we give her a little time to, yeah. to review that before. So what I've done in the, um, in the confirmation email, I've put my email address so that when questions about specific pattern questions come up, you can or actually yarn, email yarn questions. Also yarn, yarn questions, questions as well. Yeah. Okay. You can email those to me, Cinder Kersher at livestockconservancy.org. C Kersher, sorry, C Kersher at livestockconservancy.org. I will collect those and send those to Deb two days before each of the of the Facebook lives. So that she has time. Well, or prior, if I have them, yeah, have right. them prior to that. But two days, basically Mondays are your cutoff. Mondays before the live on Wednesday. We want to have our questions to Deb before that. It's not that she won't address them. It's just she won't be able to address them that week. She'll have to bring them up the next week. Unless it's a real quick question, you know, which, yeah, yeah throw, throw questions in during the sessions if you want. And if I can, I'll answer. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, that's why we're doing these live so that we can be interactive like that. But yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. Cool. Anybody watching have any questions for, for Deb or for me about the challenge? I know we've got Margaret, our, another uh, wonderful, wonderful challenge host and coach and educator <laughs> joining us today. Hi, Margaret. And uh, Jeannie Ludeni says hello, everyone. Hi, Jeannie. Thanks for joining us today. I don't know that there are a lot of folks watching at the moment because it is the middle of the day and it is two weeks before a holiday. So I'm going to assume since I don't have any questions that folks are probably busy either at work or Christmas shopping. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but feel free to, to uh, make, you know, post comments if you're watching this after the fact. And if you have any specific questions, you can email me and, um, I want to just share, we want to make sure that you have this, the sign up link for the challenge. I know that's really long. I apologize. <laughs> that is as long as it is. <laughs> However, the easy way to get there is to go to the Livestock Conservancy page, 
over on the right hand side are our drop down menus. Get involved on that drop down menu. Scroll down to shave them to save them on that shave them to shave them to save them page. It's such a tongue twister. I don't know why we did that to ourselves. <laughs> on the it left always end, it always ends up that way. Yeah, we, we did projects that spin off and ended up with confusion. <laughs> <laughs> on the shave them to save them page on the left hand side, there is a link to sign up for the challenge. So if you don't catch this, you don't have time to catch this entire address, know that you can find it there. You can also go much quicker, rarewool.org. That should take you right to the Shave Them to Save Them page. And then on the left-hand side is the link to join this shape. Save our sheep <laughs> sweater <laughs> challenge. <Yeah. laughs> All right, well, we're really we have, excited about this. We have a question about, can you join from Canada? I don't see why not. I don't see why not either. Unfortunately, we're, we're not able to accept uh, anyone outside the U.S. into the actual uh, passport program right now, but we you can certainly participate in the challenges. Yeah. We would love that. Thank you so much. Let's see. Are there any other questions or comments? And that was Judith. Thank you for asking that, Judith. Yeah. Glad you're interested all the way up there in, in Canada. That's wonderful. All right. Anything else that you think we need to share as a way of intro to the program? Just I'm really excited. I love my, my yeah. rare wool sweaters, and it's fun to think that there will be more of them out there for other people to enjoy. Walking around. Yes. I can't yeah. wait to see. So um, <laughs> sign up. <laughs> That's your dog? A supporter collie. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Uh, sign up actually is open as of today, even though the challenge doesn't start until January on the January 12th. The link is actually up. You can go and sign up today, get the rules, go onto the, the private um, website that we talked about, get the documents that Deb has provided and go searching for your start fiber. thinking. Yeah. Yeah. So Wonderful. I can't wait to see these sweaters. Thank you all for watching today and hopefully we'll see you soon in the challenge. Have a wonderful day and happy holidays. Yep.